Okay, so today we're going to look at how to load data for the first time into Kingdom Suite. So you're going to create a project. Um, you're going to give it a name. So uh, I would say have a folder, sorry, that's called Kingdom Suite or Kingdom Suite Project. Let's give the project a name. I'm going to call it Bushveld because it's Bushveld data that I'm working on. Create. It says enter the name of the author. This is not so important if you're the only person working on the data, but if, for example, you're working for a company and several people are working on the data, it's best to put your name in here so you can have different sessions. Type of project database, I just choose auto SQL. And this SQL is the uh, server window comes up. Click on this down arrow and it creates a connection for you. Server SQL connect it. It'll load something here. Sometimes it just takes a few minutes. Okay, and then so this instance of it here is Stephanie BDOF forward slash SMT Kingdom. I click OK and you can see here it says creating project. It then says analyzing the project. It just takes a bit of time on certain computers. Then it says loading the project. Okay, you'll get certain pop-up messages in this version. Authors will maintain their own preferences. I click OK. Okay, now we have to set up project options. I know mine is in meters, so I change it to meters here. If you have certain bounds that you would like to define, you can define it here. Preferred modes, I leave it as default. Um, and uh, yeah, increments, most of it I leave as default. Your seismic data elevation, datum elevation, you need to find out, it'll probably be recorded somewhere, what, if this data has previously been processed, um, to what datum was it processed. Um, yeah, so look through your data, if not, you can d define it, I, yeah. Just double check about this. I've only ever worked with data that was already processed. So I know my values were either 500 meters or 700 meters. And so here I'm putting in 500 meters. Double check. Yeah, you will have defined this in your processing steps previously. And you'll put in the value here. It's kind of that because there's topography along the profile, we choose the set datum to calculate everything relative to. It says the map data has been changed. Do you want to change the project map units? I'm fine with that. It says, do you want to use the coordinate system of an existing project? No, I'm going to create my own coordinate system. So I click no, and then it starts loading up all the icons and windows. OK, and you can see here, this is your project tree. It will look a bit different on different versions. Uh, it shows me my culture files, my uh, surveys, my boreholes, or my wells. This is my ba base map where I'll actually see my survey and uh, there's nothing loaded at the moment. And so here, I'm actually going to go up top here to um, project, project management. Okay, and I go next tab to projection. Now I want to set my coordinates. So I've said it's in meters, but I want to set what is my actual coordinate system. So mine, I'm going to select project coordinate se system uh, oh, sorry, I go up top here to other coordinate system because I'm not using a standard US projection. And I'm now going to define the datum and the, pro the projection. So I'm going to click on view datum or oh, cancel. Um, I think I'm doing something wrong here. Oh, sorry, here we are. Define new coordinate system. So I don't want to use WGS84 because mine was really collected quite a while ago and I've got a Cape, the Cape datum, South African datum. I click on custom coordinate system or to say define new coordinate system. And I'm going to click here to change the ellipsoid and reference to Cape. And there's actually something that says Cape South Africa, which I'm going to choose. And then, so this is for the datum. And then for the projection system, I'm going to use Transverse Mercator Gauss Kruger because I'm using uh, the South African coordinate system of LO. So I click there. I'm going to go to Edit Parameters, but before I do that, let's just call it something, give a name. I'm going to go call it Cape LO, and I'm using Zone 29. Edit Parameters. Um, you just have to figure this out. I don't think I'm 100% correct for now. 
Um, I'll have to give you what I've got. I'll probably come back in future and change this if I need to. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to find my file. So I've actually looked at the UTM, sorry, the LO coordinate system and recorded what values I need to put in here. I hope I'm right with it. Hopefully you've got an easier coordinate system than me. Okay, it's just... Okay, so this is the file I was looking for. So you can see, hopefully you find something like this for your coordinate system. So I'm looking at the Gauss conform and I'm going across here and you can see latitude of origin is zero, false easting at origin zero, false northing at origin zero. There's different values here um, for UTM, it's also zero, but you've got different false easting and false northing. I hope this is correct. So I've kind of got zero, zero, zero. Let's go back here. Latitude of origin was zero, false easting and northing was zero. But my longitude of my central meridian, so I'm working at ALO 29. Similar to saying you're working at UTM 35, you'd put um, whatever longitude value correlates with that zone. Um, I'm using longitude zone, uh, longitude 29, which does actually correlate with zone 29. A little bit different with UTM, just check it up, check up on it. I'm going to deal with decimal degrees. Click OK. I'm going to click OK. You can see it's changed the values here. Click OK again. Defining the coordinates to system. Do I want to change it? Yes. Okay, doesn't tell you much, but you have changed it. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to load in my uh, X and Y files, and then I'm going to load in my seg Y. I just wanted to show you so that you have the right format of your document. Um, what your X and Y files should look like. You can see here. Oh, sorry, looking in the wrong place. Okay, looking in the right place. You can see here, I've got the segment of the line, segment 1 and segment 2. I've put the values together into one text file. And first column is the line. Second is the peg number or shot point number. X coordinates in Cape LO29. Y coordinates Cape LO29. I've got an elevation here that isn't necessary. I've got tab delimited um, just to space them out. So that's what you're looking for. So if I go into Kingdom Suite, I go here to Surveys, I go Import World Coordinates, 2D by File, um, I navigate to the place I've just looked at, and you can see here, there's no files, it's just because none of them are seg slash p1. I go to Other Files, I find it this text file, I click on it, I'm importing mine in meters, that's okay. I'm going to skip one line, because that's my headings. And then I go down here, my line name, I click on it, it's my first column, it highlights. Shot point, it's going to highlight the next one. X and Y, it highlights the next one. So super easy if you've got it in the right order. You can see that if maybe I put my X first, I could, don't click on shot point, click on X, it automatically goes to the next column and highlights that. But mine is in order, so I can literally go along like this. And it's not a problem that I've got elevation. So that's fine, I click on OK. So you can see it's added the coordinates. Do I wish to load segue now? Yes, I do. OK, I use Big Indian. <laughs> Don't ask me why. Um, yes, I must do more research into it. Most of the time sections that I've worked with are, are time already. Like You get them in time. There's very limited processing that's been done on them, so they're still in time. And it's our job to convert it to depth once we know what velocities we're looking at. So you should stick with time. Click next. Click next. These are my two segwa files that I have. Um, sec section 01. I click on it here. I say segwa browse. I browse to where I've saved them. Again, it's in that folder I was just looking at. Um, I've sadly only got processed data. I don't have unprocessed data. So I click on it. You can see it's added the location. Click on section 2. Click on that, it's added both of those, click next, I keep the defaults here, I click finished, it's already loading in the Segwire data, and it's going through all the different traces, obviously it might take a while if you've got a lot of data, I zoom out here, and I can see here are my two lines, this is section 2, this is section 1, if you don't see it viewed nicely, what you're going to do is click on this button here, it says set scale, 
and you're actually going to play around with the scale value. You can see if I add a zero on the end and click apply, it zooms out, and we have it very small. Um, if I take away both zeros, it's too zoomed in probably. So you can play around with this value until you get a good value. The newer versions, I think, have better, new versions of Kingdom have better viewing options. Okay, and you can see that these circles along here are my shot points or peg numbers, and there's the name of my line. And big thing that I want to double check first is I go to Survey, I go to Assign 2D Shot Points to Traces, and I go here, I click on my first survey here. And the main thing I want to just check, I mean, it should do a default for you, but I know on some of my previous data I had to play around with it. You can see here it says shot point range 101 to 1743. You can check that this is correct with the data you have. And it's put a default of shot, traces per shot point is 2. If you want to understand what this means, okay, well, first of all, this 101 is where we're starting. If you want to change, see what this means, make this 20. You, excuse me, you can see that um, your values here have changed. If I click apply, you can see I've lost a bunch of my shot points. I'd have to actually close this to zoom up. And you can see it's condensed everything right over here because I've changed um, the value of shots per shot points. Tra sorry, traces per shot point. Change it back to 2. It's going to go there. If I make this um, 0 0.2, apply it actually reverses it it appears or well, it's made it no I think it's made it extremely large let's see yeah, it shoots off of the page so that's a good way of, for you to understand if you've got the right value here is is it fitting on your line I'm missing a bit here I've got some problems with my geometry but I, I, that's known problems that I have so I can just double check that something I can do now is double click on here and you can see the red shows that I've opened up a window with this line. The blue shows the region of the line currently viewed on my screen. So let's go down here and I'm going to zoom out a little bit. You can see my blue region is increasing as I increase the size of my line. And here you can see I've got horizons that I'm seeing on my size max. This is two-way travel time. This is shot point. If it's if the value is if you sorry you can't actually see anything because it's so um, zoomed out. Hopefully you've got a better zooming options than me on the newer versions of the software. Otherwise, click on scale. Um, I'm just trying to think what I changed to the other day that worked. Oh, not that. Five. Okay. And I was using eighty, I think here. Yeah. So not ideal. I'm really zooming out quite a bit, but it gives you a better idea of what I'm seeing. I just want to show you something here. As I put my mouse over the seismic section, on this base map underneath, you can see a, a cross that moves along. So you can actually correlate where you are on the map with where you are on your seismic section. Something else you can do is change this color scale. How you do that is click on the next button here. Next, next, and you can go through all the different colors. You can see here, positive is blue, negative is red. Maybe you prefer positive to be red. Click on this flip button, it flips it around. Okay, so this is just the basics of how to load your data in. You can actually see that as I move down here, I can confirm that I'm moving from north to south. If my lines overlapped, I would actually have a red line here showing exactly where the one line starts or correlates with the other line, but unfortunately these two lines don't overlap.